Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Mr. Muiz Banera, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, is here with us on the latest on the hush puppy matter, uh, the suspension of Mr. Uh, Abba Kiari, the uh, senior police officer linked in the hush puppy matter, being investigated by the FBI. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Banera, for joining us. Um, if you can hear me now, um, the question I was going to ask you uh, before the connection went out was that, what do you think is the implication of this matter now linked to a Nigerian, a senior Nigerian police officer in charge of intelligence unit of the Nigerian police and how the image of the country is involved here? What are the ramifications from your point of view? It's gone again. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Please go ahead, Mr. Banner. Hello? I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Well, from my perspective, certainly it is, it is a dent on the image of the... It's a dent on the image of the country, certainly on that. And I'm glad that it seems that the way we are handling it, we are handling it well so far. Because the normal thing is that you conduct your own investigation. When you conduct your own investigation, and you'll be able to know whether the allegation is that in which warrant that which warrants a sedition of the officer to the United States or not. Of course, there is a process that must be complied with in this regard, but at least what we are doing now is more or less our own internal preliminary investigation of the allegation, as that now the officer is still presumed innocent, and at the such time that we are at least able to establish a prima facie case against him, then we can then trigger the process in response to the request of the United States. But uh, it was at now, I'm not too sure there is any specific request for extradition now. All that we have learned so far is that there is an arrest warrant issued by a court of law in the United States. The implication of which is that the Interpol is supposed to execute it anywhere the officer is found. Uh, and I think that's the situation as of now. But undoubtedly, that it does not uh, threaten the image of the country. Uh, that would be an understatement. If you look at it, because I'll, I'll come to the issue of the law, uh, from what I'm learning um, and what we know about what Rahman Abbas has said, Ash Papi has said to the FBI, and the plea bargaining that is in process, I'll come to that in a moment. But let's look at the issue of the warrant of arrests that have been issued on, by the FBI. Now that uh, Mr. Abakiari has been suspended by the Nigerian police force, what does this mean? Will he be handed over to the FBI for their own investigation? Can they investigate him on investigate him on Nigerian soil or it behoves on the Nigerian police to investigate him. What does the law say about this issue? Well, like I said earlier, that it's just wanted by the United States now for the purpose of prosecution in the United States. But beyond that, before, for example, you can write a Nigerian citizen, there is a process that must be followed. And uh, as at now, although the law is neither here nor there, I know that there is uh, this 1967 legal notice that is often relied upon by the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation when it comes to the issue of extradition between Nigeria and the United States. But for some of us, we believe that Section 12 of the Nigerian Constitution will certainly override that particular legal notice. And to that extent, it cannot be said uh, that there is an extradition treaty that is enforceable between Nigeria and the United States. But be that as it may, uh, what my expectation is that before we can even go to that level, the, the preliminary investigation as is about to be done is necessary for us to establish at least what I consider or what lawyers say is a primary case before we can trigger the process of any extradition. But I do also know, as a matter of fact, that we are such warrants are issued. Normally, the mode of execution is through the international police, uh, which is the Interpol. So for now, uh, what ordinarily would then happen is for the Interpol to act if they have received the warrant of arrest. But beyond that, again, is the aspect relating to the fact that even morally, my view, this is my personal view, not the law, is that in an allegation of this nature, there is no wrong, particularly if the officer is sure of himself, to even turn himself in. Because so far, what we have heard from them is that he has no complication 
in the matter. If you do not have it, there's nothing even wrong on your own, even running there to say, look, I want to clear my reputation. So beyond the investigation being done by the government, he can equally avail himself that opportunity that is already afforded. Um, so as far as the law is concerned, what is being done is due process. So, I mean, what I wanted you to clarify for us is this. Because the Police Service Commission has said that he's suspended pending the investigation. And so, he, if the FBI has issued a warrant of arrest on him, that means FBI want to take him in, and that's a, a kind of extradition. But before that happens, is the police going, Nigerian police force, the one that will take the investigation here, according to the statement today, or what does the law say? Will it now be handed over to the FBI for that investigation? Um, can the FBI investigate him on, uh, on Nigerian soil? That's one of the uh, major issues I would like you to clarify. But uh, the FBI cannot come and do the investigation on Nigerian soil. Uh, we must put that beside. But Nigeria police is entitled to to conduct their own internal investigation. In fact, ultimately, as requested by the Police Service Commission, they still have to turn it in because when it comes to the issue of discipline, it's the Police Service Commission that has that brief. So, as of now, it's the Nigerian police force that can conduct their own internal investigation of the allegation. FBI cannot come into the country and conduct investigation here. Let me now take, uh, uh, take, take you to uh, giving us some insight on the law of evidence, which is very critical in any criminal case uh, uh, such as this, because uh, before, in the process of investigation, there will be evidence uh, if a prima facie case has been established. But in a case where a suspect has, uh, a, a, has pled guilty in a, in a criminal case, um, such person as linked in this matter, who it could be seen or perceived as accessory to the matter. What is the implication? Because whatever anyone who pleads guilty in a criminal case says is very uh, far-reaching, isn't it? But what does the law say? It's far-reaching, but it's not conclusive as against the suspect. It's not conclusive. It can still be dispensed. That assertion by the uh, person that are conversed or pleaded guilty is not binding on the new suspect. He's still presumed innocent and still have the opportunity to at least uh, present his own case. Is the issue of presumption of guilt is still is, is it relevant in the American law? I don't know if their own practice is the same with our, judi uh, our judicial practice here. The presumption of innocence. Yeah, jurisprudence is the same as in it's Nigeria. Okay. All right. It's okay. the same. There is presumption of innocence. Okay. So uh, we'll be hoping and uh, looking forward to how this pans out. Not so much can be discussed for now because it's still unfolding. Uh, perhaps uh, for those who have praised the Nigerian police force, would you join them to say uh, kudos uh, for suspending Mr. Abakiari in this process? Certainly, I will. I'm glad they've done that. At least they've been able to salvage some measure of our integrity, of our reputation as a country by that particular, by that singular act. At least it shows that they are serious-minded and something is being done. The usual expectation in our contest, in our, uh, in our country, is that such will be sought under the carpet. But with the action they have taken now, it seems to suggest that there is some measure of seriousness taking place in the arena now. So, they deserve the commendation. It's not misplaced at all. For people like Hush Poppy and the likes, uh, who, uh, I, I, well, uh, Hush Poppy is still allegedly involved in the matter because the case is not uh, uh, conclusive yet. But for those who are involved in internet fraud, who stay under the disguise of internet and in the dark to defraud people, what do you want to tell them tonight? How, what would you say to them in this kind of situation, especially when the integrity of the nation is involved? Well, the integrity of the nation is involved is at stake, and we will plead with them to desist from such acts. But beyond that, 
One thing is certain is that no matter how long the arm of the Lord will still catch up with them, they can't escape forever. So they must constantly bear that in mind. And the earlier, the better they realize that and appreciate that fact, the better for them to at least desist from such acts. Let me switch yes now and move into, the, uh, into politics. Yesterday, Saturday, the 31st August 2021, the All Progressives Congress, APC, began the transition process. It said it will embark upon since the governor, Mayor Malabuni, led caretaker committee, came to the public with the plans of conducting a national convention and putting in place a substantive leadership of the party. One thing that almost ruined that party was the Supreme Court judgment and the implications of it. There are a lot of people who are aggrieved in the matter. Let's speak with Mr. Banera, who is also a former legal advisor of the APC. Give us your view on what happened. There are several states, like Bayesa uh, in Oshun State, in Lagos State, a few states in Nigeria, people are aggrieved about the World Congress. Um, uh, you understand uh, the intricacies of what led to this situation in the APC. Let me get your view on the ongoings. Uh, you mean the ongoing Congress? Absolutely. Well, my view is that, um, uh, uh, how do I say, well, let me just mildly and diplomatically put it that what is going on is reckless, to say the least. My expectation is that that event of yesterday should have been postponed for several reasons. In the first instance, to the best of my knowledge, within their circle, I know that there is no credible register upon which they can premise any Congress at all. Secondly, I'm aware, if no other place of Lagos State, that even those who were supposed to conduct were just convening stakeholders meetings of a few hours to the end of yesterday without any word committee at all. People were, no register was displayed, no nomination form. People didn't even have nomination form. They didn't submit anything. Nobody screened anybody. So from my perspective, it's just a complete sham. And uh, it's even, if we, for whatever it is what we consider the decision of the APS court Latin class Wednesday or so, uh, one would have expected a very responsible manager to tarry a bit and let the cloud be clear. Right now, as I'm talking to you, it's very cloudy. Nobody understands the graffiti or the import of the Supreme Court decision of Wednesday in a credulous case. And in such circumstances, you do not proceed until you are clear in your thought and in your ways. Uh, as of today, I can tell you, so many opinions have been expressed, but all of them, I will say, without fear of contradiction, they are all speculative and premature. Nobody has seen the full judgment, the official judgment of the court as of today. The expectation is that hopefully by tomorrow, the certified true copy will be released for people to digest them and now be able to make informed decision and opinion. And in such circumstances, why would they proceed? What is, why are they in a hurry to do something which eventually might end up being calamitous? Because if eventually it is the truth that the Supreme Court, the April Court, have come, came to the conclusion, unanimously for that matter, that Governor Boni ought not to have signed any of the nomination papers of uh, Governor Akere Dolu. The same thing will apply to the Congress they are doing because this, the, the letter of notification to INEC was signed equally by Governor Madaboni. So if the foundation is lacking, certainly you can't build anything on it. So at the end of the day, the whole exercise will be a nullity. It's a complete waste of everybody's time. So for me, the least I can say is that the exercise is just simply reckless. I do not want to use the word irresponsible as I've said before, but let me just say it's reckless. You mentioned two things which I would like you to clarify. You talked about uh, the unavailability of register, but the party said that it just concluded a national registration. Yes, I'm aware they did the registration. There is a difference between registration and register. You can do registration. It's the process of computer compilation and corporatization that will lead to having a register of party members. Today, ask them how many party members are issued. Do contestants even know those who will be voting for them, which is part of the basic requirement of a free and fair election or a free and a transparent Congress. 
That is not appropriate. Where did you see in your own sojourn yesterday the register have been displayed? Or the names of even contestants have been displayed? They have said that they, in fact, I believe that as a result, due to the lack of the register itself, they decided to promote consensus. But unfortunately, they, could, they didn't eventually achieve that at all. At least in Lagos State, I can tell you that there are no less than five tendencies, all of whom disagree. Several parallel congress, supposed or purported congresses yesterday. So for me, from my experience with even all progressive congress, when they tell you consensus, just take it as imposition. It's as simple as that. It has a different connotation under APC. But the, the, the party's constitution uh, recognizes the issue of consensus is one of the options in electing officers in, in, uh, in, 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 in the offices stipulated by the party's constitution. Is there anything wrong with consensus? There's nothing absolutely wrong with consensus, of course. I, am, I would be one of the people to encourage consensus, but once there is a voice of dissent, it ceases to be consensus. Proper Congress must be held. That is the position of the law. Anything beside that is a nullity. So, yeah, a proper Congress must be held, yes. But consensus is one of the options of election as stipulated by the Constitution. Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. But mark my word, I say once there is a dissent, was one person, for example, like I said to you, I said, in Lagos, where I operate from, and I'm conversant with the fact, I know there are not less than about five tendencies, if you like, call them factions of APC. In such a case, all the five must agree of, to what is happening. Once any one of them disagrees, then there can never be consensus again. But what, what, can, what would happen, because uh, the president had instructed at the next meeting that anyone who is aggrieved should go to the court and withdraw their cases. A day before the Congress uh, started, or the, day, the date for the Congress, uh, right here, uh, uh, news just came in right on set on Friday that in Bayelsa, some members of the party had gone to court to stop the exercise. What does that mean? Is it that uh, it, things are, uh, the, it's a boomerang, or is it, things are escalating, or the cookie is crumbling? yet again, like we saw before the Catholic Committee came in place. Certainly, the cookie is crumbling, undoubtedly. I can tell you for free, in fact, as at the last county, there were about five or seven cases as of Friday. And I can tell you for free, before the end of this week, it's not unlikely to be up to 30 of those such cases. And uh, it's expected anyway, because once there is a violation of the document that binds all of them as members of their party together then the only option open to people is to ventilate their grievance in court no other way say you want to promote anarchy and they take the law into their hand so for me I, they haven't done anything wrong and they do not even need as far as the law is concerned to exhaust any internal or domestic remedy within the party because the constitution gives unfettered access to the court so no other act law guideline can disentitle anybody from going to court, much less a pronouncement of a person. Uh, this is also very interesting uh, because uh, in the cases that have, uh, for some of the years that have uh, uh, monitored uh, political development in Nigeria, especially internal politics of political parties, when you see people going to court in this manner over the national, uh, the validity of the national leadership of a party, it doesn't end well. It waits for them in the wing, very close to the general elections, and it's a bad omen for the political party. It was a political move, a political solution that the APC put in place to resolve some of the critical issues, the legal issues, before the Memal Abuni intervention came. Would a political solution, and how would it happen, be able to help APC in this situation? Well, honestly speaking, I'm not too sure that political situation can come to their rescue again. It appears to me to be too late in the day. And legally, uh, the, if they have to go legal, then if what is playing out is something to go by, then at the end of the day, you also discover that it could be catastrophic for the party, as has been variously commented and predicted by a lot of people. There is no doubt about the fact that the nearer we get to the election, the higher the hostility. So 
for me, I believe that it's becoming extremely difficult to find or develop any mechanism towards the resolution of the conflict that is playing out now. Particularly, there are so many interest groups already in the party, and most of them, of course, uh, are rising or growing against the background of the 2023 election. And where such happens, and there is a threshold, or there is a particular, uh, uh, there is a particular item that all of them are looking up to, then it becomes practically impossible to find a common ground in this system. So for me, the only way for them now, where they are, even without necessarily looking, reading, or seeing the Supreme Court judgment, I will say that as this stands today, if we go by Article 17, Roman figure 4 of the APC Constitution, it is very explicit. There is no way the present caretaker committee can do anything that will not amount to a nullity. Every step they have taken so far, the one they are taking right now, and the one they, they, are, they should be taking, will eventually are not really likely to be a nullity. So why do you want to go to that direction? So for me, I, I have predicted it, and I, I hope I will be disappointed that certainly internal implosion of the party seems to me to be inevitable ultimately. Hmm. That's very instructive. Coming from someone who has... Uh, upheld the constitution of the APC for several years and uh, educated for the APC in several uh, situations. Mr. Muiz Banere, senior advocate of Nigeria and the former national legal advisor of the APC. It's a pleasure having you tonight and thank you so much for the thought that you have shared. My pleasure.